Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Hello, hello, this is lesson 23, adding and subtracting expressions with radicals. Okay, seems more like an algebra uh, review, but let's get to it. So exercise, that means you do it yourself. Pause the video, see if you can do these five problems on this page. Unpause the video and we'll check your solutions. So here we go. So as I stated in lesson 22, if you really know your multiplication tables and you know what perfect squares are in there, like um, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, um, 64, 81, 100, 121, and so on, then this gets very simple. But I'm still going to do it as my factor tree way. So here we go. Simplify each expression as much as possible. I will do a factor tree for 32, and 32 is even, so I can divide it by 2 and get 16. Still even, divide it by 2 and get 8. Still even, divide it by 2 and get 4. Still even, divide it by 2 and get 2. I have a pair of 2s. I have two pairs of 2s. 2 times 2 can come out of the radical. The 2 that is not paired up has to stay in. 2 times 2 is 4. So we get 4 square root 2. If you want to check with your calculator, put the original in, put your, answer, put your simplified version in, and make sure the decimals match. OK, so that's that. <clears throat> Number 2, 45 is not even. <clears throat> Five plus four is nine. Three will go into nine, so three will go into 45. Three goes into four once, so the remainder of one. Three goes into 15 five times. 15 is odd. Five plus one is six. Three goes into six, so three goes into 15. Five times three is 15. Five's prime, we're done. <clears throat> we have a pair of threes. We have a five single. So the answer is five. No, it's not. The answer is the pair comes out and the single stays in three root five. I'm not going to check all of these, but if you feel the need, go for it. <clears throat> okay, square root of 300. All right. I know it's 100 times 3 and 100 is a perfect square, but if I didn't realize that, I will do a factor tree of 300. Factoring out the smallest number that I'll go into, which is 2 divided by 150, or 2, 300 divided by 2 is 150, still even. 150 divided by 2 is 75. No longer even, but it ends in a 5, so now I can factor out 5s. 5 times, no, 3, factor out a 5. <clears throat> or actually, I can factor out a 3. 7 plus 5 is 12. Let's do it that way. Let's get the smallest factors out first. 3 goes into 7 two times with a remainder of 1. 3 goes into 15 five times. And then 25 is 5 times 5. Okay, so it doesn't matter what order you do, but I prefer to go with the smallest factors first. And they line up 2, 2, 3, 5, 5. They're all, e they're all in order from least to greatest. There is a pair of twos. Here is a pair of fives. So it would be two times five outside the radical. And then three is by itself, so it stays in. And two times five is 10. And the answer is 10 square root three, which is 100 times three and the square root of 100 is 10. Either way you do it, same answer. Okay, hopefully you got those. So let's move on to number four. The triangle shown below has a perimeter of 6.5 square root 2 units. Make a conjecture about this answer, answer was re reached. All right, well, perimeter. <laughs> Can't write with my eraser. Perimeter equals side plus side plus side. So perimeter equals 2 square root 2 plus 
3 square root 2 plus 1.5 square root 2. All right, so when you have a radical in a term or in multiple terms and they're all the same, we can add the number out in front. Think of that as 2x plus 3x plus 1.5x. Well, you'd get 6.5x, wouldn't you? So it's the same rule for the square root 2. Just assume that x equals the square root of 2 and these are variables and it works the same way. So p will equal 2 plus 3 plus 1.5. So I'm taking all those numbers out in front and I'm going to put the square root of 2 in parentheses. So think of that as the distributive property or factoring. I factored out a square root of 2 from all the terms, leaving me with the number in front. And then I can put those numbers in front together and I get 6.5 and then times that square root of two. And there it is. Okay, so putting this into words, I could say it appears that when all three sides of a triangle were added, the numbers that preceded the square roots were only numbers that were added. That is true. Three plus two plus 1.5 equals 6.5. The square root of two shown as part of each length remains the square root of two. So it's really factoring distributive property in reverse, if you will. Okay, and number five, <clears throat> the sides of a triangle are four root three, square root of 12, and square root of 75. Make a conjecture about how to determine the perimeter of this triangle. Okay, so P equals side plus side plus side. P equals four square root three plus square root 12 plus square root 75. Uh-oh. Unlike up here where I have root two, root two, root two, I have everything the same. These are not the same. So think of this as four X plus Y plus Z. You can't add unlike terms. But if I simplify my square root of 12 by doing a factor tree, it's two times six, which is two times three. And that gives me a two pair of twos. So four square root three cannot be simplified. So I will leave it. I just simplified the square root of 12 and the pair can come outside as one and the leftover stays inside the radical, okay? And then let's change colors for 75. I will do the factors of 75. It ends in five, so I'll use five. Five goes into seven once, five goes into 25, five times, and then 15 is three times five, okay? So notice when I did this, these numbers aren't in order and to see the pair, I've got to do this, right? So let me show you, that is why in the last problem, I started with the smallest factor. Seven plus five is 12. 12 is a factor of three, or 12 is divisible by three. Three is a factor of 12. So I can put a three here. So that is the smallest prime factor of 75. Three goes into seven two times, the remainder of one. Three goes into 15, five times. And then 25 is five times five. And when I do that, my pairs are next to each other. So the pair comes outside and what's left over goes in the radical. So now, as you can see, I have a radical three, a radical three, a radical three. So now I can do what I did in the last problem, P, equals four plus two plus five times, and I'll do it this way, the square root of three. So I factored out the greatest common factor of all three terms, okay? The common factor of those three terms was the square root of three. And now I can add those like terms. Four plus two is six plus five is 11 and square root three. So the perimeter of said triangle is 11 square root three. Okay, so putting this into words, obviously answers will vary. The goal is for students to realize that the square root of 12 and the square root of 75 can be rewritten so that each has a factor of the square root of three, which when strongly resembles exercise four, which was stated and then it says by rewriting each side length as a multiple of square root three, we get what I have up above in this line 
right here, okay? And then we end up with this. Some students may answer incorrectly by adding the square root of three plus the square root of 12 plus the square root of 75. So show that this is incorrect using a simple example. The square root of nine plus the square root of 16 does not equal the square root of 25. Because if I did this, three is the square root of nine, four is the square root of 16, and 25 is, five is the square root of 25. And obviously seven does not equal five. So you can't just add radicals that are not the same radicand. Okay, page two brings us to one more exercise, number six. Pause the video, see if you can do this, and then unpause, check your answers, and we'll move on to the first example of this lesson. So it says exercise six, circle the expressions that can be simplified using the distributive property. Be prepared to explain your choices. Alrighty then, so I have the square root of two. I have a square root of two. They are like terms. I can factor out the square root of two. That is the distributive property. Square root of 13, 13 is prime, I cannot simplify. Six is three times two, no pairs, I cannot simplify. They are not like terms, I cannot factor. 45 is the square root of nine times the square root of five. Square root of nine is three. So I get three square root five. I have a square root five. I have a square root five. This one can be factored. So I will circle it. Square root of seven, square root of seven, square root of whoops. Nope. They all have to be the same. I have these two that could be factored, but this cannot be factored out. So I could simplify these two and get five square root seven, 11 minus six. So I guess this could be, so I'm not gonna say no. It doesn't say completely. This can be factored Sim more precisely these two. That root three or three square root two will still be its own term. All right, so eight can be simplified to four times two. And so that would be two square root two. And we haven't discussed this type of problem yet. So let's do it over on the side here. If I have 19 square root two and I add two square root eight, I can't do anything with the 19 square root two. It's the simplest form, but eight is two times four. And four is obviously two times two. And I have a pair of twos. So I can say, bring this two down, don't forget it. And then this two comes outside. That's why I said, don't forget it. This is why we didn't do one of these yet. And I have a leftover two. Don't forget to multiply our like term. 19 square root two plus two times two square root two. And these can now be added. 19 plus four is 23 square root two. So yes, okay. So I guess that's a better way of doing these and then I'll just erase this so I have room for the next. Four plus the square root of 11, uh, no radical. Radical that can't be simplified, no. Um, square root of seven, two square root 10, two square root 10. If I take the 10 off to the side and do a factor tree, it's two times five. I can't simplify that and seven and 10 are not the same radicand, so no. All right, square root of 12 is two times six, which is two times three. Here's my pair, becomes two square root three. See how quick and easy this gets if you really know your multiplication tables? And the square root of 75 is three times 25, five times five. There's my pair, that becomes five square root of my leftover. I can subtract these and it'd be two minus five square root three, which is negative three square root three. So this one can be factored. Okay, just keeping in. All right, square root of 32, all right. Square root 32 plus square root two 
plus square root two cannot be simplified. So I brought that down. And 32's factor tree is two times 16, two times eight, two times four, which is two times two. One pair, two pairs, a leftover. Two times two is four, square root of my leftover. Bring down plus square root two. Think of that as a one here. Four plus one square root two, five square root two. Done. Let me clean up. And on to the next. Okay, six square root 13, I'll do it here. Six plus the square root of 13. No, silly, there's no plus in between there. Six square root 13 plus square root 26. 13 is prime, so there's nothing I can do with that. I'm bringing that down. And the square root of 26 is two times 13. Uh-oh, I don't have any pairs. I can't just pull that two out and say it's square root 13. So I can't simplify the square root of 30, or 26. Two times 13 is 26. 13 is prime, two is prime. My factors are just two and 13. I don't have any pairs. I can't simplify. This cannot be factored by the distributive property. Okay, so that's what you should have gotten. All right, let's move along to example one. All right, give me a moment here. Okay, so I just got rid of the footer there. Example one says to explain how the expression 8.3 square root two plus 7.9 square root two can be simplified using the distributive property. Well, the square root of two and the square root of two are like terms. So I can take the sign that's in the problem and add what's out in front, 8.3 and 7.9, put them in parentheses and put the square root of two outside. That's a distributive property in reverse, if you will. Because if I distribute now, I'd get 8.3 square root two plus 7.9 square root two just by distributing the multiplication through this binomial. So 8.3 plus 7.9, 9 plus three is 12, carry the one. Seven plus one is eight, eight plus eight is 16, point two, and then bring down your radical. And that is how you simplify using the distributive property. Should I explain it in words? Sure, why not? So here's our explanation. All right. Each term of the expression has a common factor square root two. For that reason, the distributive property can be applied. 8.3 square root two plus 7.9 square root two equals 8.3 plus 7.9 square root two, which is what I have here. And by distributing, we get 16.2 square root two. Okay, and I'm going to get that out of the way. And number or part, the second part of the example says explain how this expression can be simplified using. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to color code it first. All right, something's going on on my computer here. 11. Let me switch pages and come back because that's what happens to my pen. 11. square root seven minus six square root seven plus three square root two. Notice how I color coded this. The 11 and the six are coefficients, if you will. They're out in front of a radical. The radicals are the same, so they're like terms. And this term here is totally different because the square root of two is not the square root of seven and these are all simplified. So there's nothing we can do with this. So I left that in purple. We're gonna leave that alone. 
So since these root sevens are the same, we can factor them out and get a square root of seven outside of my parentheses in front here and subtract my like term 11 minus six. And then I'm just going to bring down that plus three square root two. Okay. And then that 11 minus six can be simplified to five. And I have the square root of seven plus three square root two. And we're done. That's it. I cannot add these two together because of those radicals. Okay. So putting this into words, the word is. Okay. So here it is. It says the expression can be simplified because the first two terms contain the expression of square root of seven. Using the distributive property, we get the following. And they're just explaining what I did. And it says by the distributive property, we end up with five square root seven plus three square root two. Okay, page three brings us to example two. And it says, explain how, to, how the expression 19 square root two plus two square root eight can be simplified using the distributive property. Okay, so 19 square root two is in simplest form because the square root of two is not, I can't reduce that. I cannot factor anything out of the square root of two. But the square root of eight over here on the other hand can be factored and if I do a tree, it's two times four and four is two times two. I get my pair of twos and I have my loner that stays in the radical. So this is going to be plus and you see this two right here? Do not forget that. That is right there, put a multiplication symbol and these pairs of twos become one outside. So that goes there, then put the radical and you're left over two. Be very careful not to forget the number out in front. It's getting multiplied by what you pull out of the radical. So first simplify that and I get 19 square root two plus four square root two. Okay, so now I have like terms, both radical twos, so I can factor out the numbers in front and just add them together, put them in parentheses. That's the distributive property, square root two. And now 19 plus four is 23 and I get 23 square root two. And we're done. Now, remember what I said about checking. It's very simple to check with a calculator. Do not assume when you take quizzes and tests that just because you're done, you got the right answer. Take the original, 19 square root two plus two square root eight and hit enter. And that'll give you a decimal approximation because these are irrational. And it's 32.5. Then I put 23 square root two in because that's what I got for simplified value and it should be the same as the original. And I got 32.5269. Obviously you can see they match. So therefore it checks. That is the correct solution. But we want to explain this. So it says explain how this expression can be simplified. And when I do these videos, I'm explaining with my mouth but I'm not putting it into on the screen. So I will do that for you. Copy, paste, and this is how your answer should look. So it can be simplified by first, but first the term two square root eight must be rewritten. So 19 plus two square, 19 root two plus two root eight equals this. Okay, they're showing it a little bit differently. Um, by rule one, they're basically just saying that eight is the square root of four times the square root of two, which is true. And then the square root of four becomes two times two. And so they're just showing it a little differently. I like using factor trees and that's just the way I do it. And so here's the explanation if you need to write that down. So pause the video and write it down. Otherwise I'm moving on and deleting. Example three, can the expression square root of seven plus two square root 10 be simplified using the distributive property? So I look at this and I say, well, square root of seven is in simplest form. So there's nothing I can do with that. And then I'll come over here and take that square root of 10 and simplify it. Cause I know 10 isn't prime. 10 is two times five, but two is prime and five is prime. So there's my prime factorization of 10 and there's no pairs. So I cannot bring anything out. So I have to put them back together. This is not reducible and it cannot be simplified using the distributive property. So I'd say no, and I'd say because the square root of seven and the square root of 10 cannot be simplified and they are not like terms. 
So down below here, it says to determine if an expression can be simplified, you must first simplify each of the terms within the expression, then apply the distributive property or other properties as needed to simplify the expression. Okay, page four brings us to the end of lesson 23. That was just a totally radical review, wasn't it? Go do your problems then.